The fallout continues after the Ashley Madison data breach. The site caters to married men and women who want to cheat on their partners. Now the personal information of an estimated 37 million users has been leaked online. Names, email addresses, sexual preferences. It's raising questions about the future of internet privacy. Terry Cutler is a cybersecurity expert and founder of the data defense digital firm, Digital Locksmith. Thank you for joining us, Thanks Terry. For having me. Thank you. So um, this is something that you know brings back memories of the Sony hack. Target also went through a credit card data breach. So yeah. it seems to show that no matter how big a company is or how immune they may seem to this kind of thing, they're they're not. Right. Exactly. And this, but this hack is a little different because it um, it can involve extortion because now you got the names of people uh, where they live, their credit card data, their sexual preferences, and now with the latest leaking of, uh, of new data, it's got photos and possibly videos of these people. So uh, needless to say, uh, Christmas came early for divorce lawyers. <laughs> yes, no kidding. So is this just part of a new reality when it comes to internet privacy or lack thereof? It's, it's getting very interesting because what's happening is nobody's robbing banks anymore, right? Everything's going online. And because uh, hackers and scammers can hide their tracks through the internet, it becomes more easier for them to commit these crimes. And it's very hard for law enforcement because they're already overwhelmed and possibly undertrained to track all these guys down. Mm -hmm. So especially you know, when everything's going online, the power grid, electrical grids you know these gonna be these gonna be uh, high targets uh, for the future so it's the impact team this anonymous online group that's claiming responsibility for this uh, the CEO of the company has said you know this looks like it could have been an inside job do you think that that's what's most likely? I mean, how sophisticated do these groups have to be to carry out this kind of hack? I mean, it could be an inside job, but at the same time, you know, whenever we do our intrusion testing for companies, right, uh, we always try to go after the IT administrators because usually they're not monitored. So if we can find a way to trick the administrator into clicking on our links and possibly getting a hold of their password, I can, I can uh, kind of become them on the system. So now whenever I siphon all this data out, they'll think, oh, it's my IT administrator that did this. In fact, it was me sitting in you know, Montreal or Toronto. And obviously part of the problem here is that this data is easily searchable online. Anyone right. can find it. Yes. Uh, I think the website is called trustify.info. Uh, it allows you to search if your email address has been compromised or inside the Ashley Madison database. Now, for more sophisticated uh, folks, you can actually go to BitTorrent and actually pull down some of our databases. It's about 10 gig in size. The new one is actually 20 gig. And, and, but they claim to have up to 300 gig of data, which is a lot of stuff. Now, it seems that a lot of work email addresses have been revealed. Yeah. And, and, and what does that say about what companies should be telling their employees about internet privacy? Well, it's going to become, uh, you know, work is work. You know, your personal time, you shouldn't be using uh, corporate resources, right? So uh, it's going to be interesting discussion. Yes. Uh, it's hard for folks to prepare for this because, you know, this is not your typical, you know, credit card breach. Now you've got to prepare to tell your spouse that you could be uh, exposed, right? So. Uh, I think there's a class action lawsuit, I think, is yes, pending also. Yes, exactly. That's right. And I guess the lesson here is that no matter uh, how secure you think your information is, when you put it online, it never really is If you're going to cheat, secure. do it in person. <laughs> there's n nothing is safe online. Yeah, nothing at all, including this, this whole infidelity issue. Exactly. Well, thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate that. Oh, looks like we have a little bit more time left. I have one more question sure. for you. You know, when it comes to passwords and stuff, yes. do people choose passwords that are a little too easy, for example, just they generally do. speaking, a Most little lazy. Most of the time, they really create crappy passwords, like one, two, three, four, five, mm -hmm. or password, or name of their pet. And you want to create passwords that are between 16 and 25 characters long. Okay. Now, I know what you're thinking, like, how on earth am I going to remember a password that long? Um, write it down, I write guess. Write it down, I or, or uh, best way. remember things like passphrases or song lyrics. So if you say uh, like a password, like I had a great day today, 2015, and replace the A with an at symbol, the one with, uh, with uh, asterisks or whatever, um, it'll actually become a strong password and okay. unbreakable. Well, thank you very much for your insight. We're out of time. Thank you. Thank you. We'll be right back.